Hey guys, Crave here. And uh, it never really occurred to me to make a video about this topic. It's just that uh, someone made a post in one of my other uploads asking if I could do one for how I set up Yield UI. That's a good idea. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so ELVUI is basically just an evolution of Takui, but this version of Takui is actually not just a rehash. It's a, uh, it's uh, the way they're saying it's a, pretty much an overhaul of the existing Takui interface, and um, it's the user-friendly version of it. Uh, with a, it, it comes along with it a GUI, so I'm guessing Takui never really had a GUI interface, or if it did, it might have been a little bit more advanced or complicated compared to what you're going to be to see in a bit. Now. I don't know if you've played around with other UIs, but um, it does take a while to get things to look the way you want it to. Uh, unless, of course, you go with the default route of most UIs where once you install it, you just go ahead and use it. I, I suppose that's fine. But um, if you do tweak it, it does take time to get things to look the way you want it to. So what I'm going to be doing for this guide is that uh, I'm going to make it uh, look, at least the base layout for ELV, ELV UI, to look like what you're seeing right now, the way I've set it up. And so that will mean I will intentionally and unintentionally uh, miss on a few steps. Uh, so I encourage you to basically um, experiment with the UI once you get the hang of things. Um, it's, it's, it's even good if you do that, mainly because you can get a more personal experience out of the add-on. Now, as with my other guides, you are going to see some links on your screen uh, pointing you directly to specific parts of this guide. If you don't make a selection, I will go ahead to the part where you can quickly download and install the UI. To get the add-on, you need to head on over to takui.org's page and make sure you are able to see the uh, download option. I will add some text on the screen so that it's, it's uh, easier for you to see. But it's basically this one on the right side. And when you click that download button, you actually get, let me just open it up, an archived file, which is this one. Uh, it's a compressed file, archived file. So you basically have two folders in it. I'm not sure whether... Uh, Takui slash ELVUI plans to change that in the future, but uh, ever since I've only been seeing uh, two folders, ELVUI and ELVUI underscore config. Now, what you want to do with that is you either copy or cut and paste that into your WoW add-ons folder. So let me just open that up. It's this one. I'll also make sure to add uh, the path for the add-ons folder in case you've never done it before. And that's pretty much it. Once you paste it in there, uh, you're pretty much done with the grabbing or slash downloading part and pasting it into your or installing it in your add-ons folder. Once you're done with that, uh, we can begin the guided setup, which is basically offered by ELVUI. So this is the guided setup that is offered by ELVUI. Uh, the first time you actually install ELVUI in your client, uh, you need to go through this process and um, well, it's suggested really that you go through this process and once you have a couple of alts that are running on ELVUI and uh, you like actually one of the setups and you just want to simply copy it over, then we're going to be, you're going to be able to use the profiles option to basically just copy whatever settings you have on that alt and just basically copy it into your new character or any other existing character. Now, let me just show you this process so that uh, you're aware of it. So the first page is just basically showing you, uh, well, it's an installation process. Second is that uh, CVARS, to be honest, I'm not sure what that does, but um, since we don't have any other option but to click set up CVARS, we're going to go ahead and do that and continue. So the next one is about chat. So it basically just sets up your chat windows and um, I don't understand, but there's really no other option to do or any other option to click. So we go ahead and click chat and click continue. So the next one is theme setup. Uh, you do have some options here, but then again, it will just result in a pretty much default layout. So you have three options here. You can go classic, which is um, I think what you're seeing right now. You also have the option to go dark. As you can see, the health bar has went dark or black-ish. And you also have the option to go for class colors, what you're seeing right now. So I've always liked uh, class colors, so we can go with that. And uh, excuse my son, he's... <laughs> I'm not sure what he's doing. He's probably watching a cartoon or I don't know. But uh, anyway, so next part is resolution. So your current resolution is like this, and this is considered high resolution. So I just simply suggest you go ahead with what ELVUI suggests. And uh, in this case, it identified whatever I have right now as high resolution. So we go with that. 
and um, layout so you're offered some layouts basic layouts that you can just choose to follow again these will result in default layouts so since this is a pally uh, I think I'll go with physical DPS and uh, next one is for ors so you can choose whether you want ors and icon or bars and icons or basically just icons and um, I've always been a fan of seeing both so I think I'll go with our bars and icons okay so next and that's it finished and that's pretty much the guided setup offered by uh, ELVUI again you can skip that once you have alts running with a setup that you already like now we can get into the meat of the whole video which is basically tweaking the UI to make it look like mine okay so we are now at the more important part of the guide which is basically being able to tweak the UI to look like mine so that you get the hang of things or you understand how things work and basically be able to tweak your own ELV UI setup to sort of fit your needs and uh, your own style the first thing uh, I want to talk about is the grid feature in ELV UI so you can access that by going to chats typing in slash ELV UI and uh, going into the or hitting the toggle anchors uh, tab so this is the grid feature in ELV UI so you are able to basically move around the frames from here and uh, using the grid layout it just makes things sort of orderly and sort of in sync or if you want to balance things in the screen yet yeah, that, that's because of this that you're able to do that now sometimes things can go out of whack or stuff I don't know I don't know why sometimes my party frames will move slightly a bit to the left or I don't know be out of place but this grid feature allows you to put things into place again and uh, make it easy in the process so remember this part that we do have the grid feature in ELV UI. Okay, so the second part of this section of the guide is being... Well, I will focus on changing up the player frames and the target frames to make it look like uh, what you're seeing on the upper left of the screen right now. And uh, yeah, I'll focus on that and hopefully you can apply it eventually to any other frames that you want to use it on or the, the, the process on. So... What you're seeing right now, I do have my frames in such a way where the health bar is pretty big. Uh, you've got uh, a 3D player portrait going on in there. You've got the mana bar. For, it's a paladin, so you've got the mana bar on the lower right part. But uh, it's not connected to the health bar. And uh, what you're seeing on top right there is basically the holy power bar. But it's not together and it looks different. So we're going to try and copy that. I hope I don't mess it up. So, as I mentioned, to basically get into the ELVUI options, that's slash ELVUI. And once you're in there, you hit the unit frames uh, section and go to player frame. Okay. So, once you're in there, uh, the first thing you want to do is adjust the height of the, well, the health bar. Since in the picture on the upper left, it looks a bit bigger. So, we're going to do that. Okay, not too big. That looks about right. Okay. So the next thing we want to do uh, is adjust the, um, well, we can adjust the, the text right there since uh, you can see on the screen, it's uh, a bit lower uh, and bottom left and bottom right. So we can do that. So for the health, we can adjust the Y offset. Okay. So I think we've done it. And um, we can now go ahead and make changes to the mana bar, which is power. So we can also move that about, but I think we can adjust it right here. Yeah. Okay, so that works. Let me see if we can do the same for health. Uh, simple drop down. Yep, we do. Okay. Okay, I think uh, that's mainly because of the offset. So let's bring that back to zero. Okay, so I, I would suggest, yeah, just using the drop down so that uh, it's perfectly aligned. Okay, so we can move on back to the power bar or the mana bar for paladins uh, or any other mana using class. And we, what we want to do is sort of detach the mana bar um, and bring it to the lower right part. So we don't use this detach feature. What we do is just simply adjust the offset slider. So we do that. Okay, let's bring it. I think 11 is close enough. Let's bring it to 12. Okay. All right, let's just type it. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so so far we've been successful in adjusting the health and the mana bar. Let's now go ahead and uh, that holy power bar, that power bar is out of sync. So let's adjust that. That should be your class bar. Okay. And what we want to do is just hit on spaced. And that's it. 
you basically have a uniform looking holy power bar or class bar. So I believe this can also apply to other classes like death knights with the rune system, uh, rogues, of course I, I use that on my character, um, with the combo point system, and uh, I'm leveling a affliction warlock right, now, warlock right now, so I think that also applies to that class. So yeah, and what do we do next? And uh, oh yeah, the portraits, so I think a lot of people are interested in that. So in the drop down, simply select portrait and select enable. Now by default, that is the normal behavior for ELV UI. Uh, what you do to bring it inside the health bar is simply select overlay and that's it. Now since it's a bit too close and like the picture, uh, just simply go into the distance scale slider for the camera and adjust it accordingly. So let's bring it smaller right now. Okay, that looks pretty good. Am I missing anything? Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so we have successfully be able, you know, been able to set up the player frame, which is your character's frame, my character's frame, and uh, we should do the same with the target frame so that it looks balanced. Now, when you head on over to the target frame section, you don't have to do everything from scratch. So just simply go on over to the copy from option and select player, and that's it. You basically have right now the same option which is available to which you made for your player frame and it's in sync. Now if you want to make adjustments to in this case this third uh, frame which is the target of target, uh, just go ahead and adjust it yourself uh, and since you already know how to basically make the adjustments uh, with the player frame and the target frame, you can go ahead and do that with the target of target or any other individual frames. Oh, and one more thing before I forget, uh, something about auras and icons. So if you just wanted to show and make adjustments to it, you simply click in the player frame or in the target frame window, click on show auras. So that's it. You're seeing a sample of your auras right now, uh, pens, well in this case, some icons and the uh, timer for each uh, aura. Uh, if you want to make adjustments to that, simply head on over to aura bars. And you will have a host of options uh, to be able to tweak and change according to your needs. So basically, I suggest leaving Show RS on while you are tweaking so that you can see or at least see the visible changes uh, or visibly see the changes that you're making to it. Next up is basically modifying the chat window to make it look like what you're seeing on the upper left part of your screen right now. And um, not really a whole lot of changes that we can make to it, except maybe, well, one noticeable change is probably that graphic you're seeing, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now let's just check out the chat section of the add-on. So there's a whole lot of options here that you can use, and um, I'll just mention the ones that are really, really useful. So the first one is the chat timestamp. So that's really useful in case someone well, one useful scenario is in Tanan, let's say someone calls out uh, looking for group for Kaz or uh, they're not using the group finder feature or um, I don't know, uh, bench up, uh, not not pulled, not tapped or whatever. So, and you, well, at the time that the message went out, you went AFK. So the chat timestamps will be useful for you to know whether if, you know, as you know in Tanan, if you're just 30 seconds behind that message uh, or a minute behind that message, you're probably too late if you're somewhere in your... Um, main base in Tanaan. So that's one use of the chat timestamps. It's optional if you want to enable that. The second thing probably is the alerts or the whisper alerts. So sometimes some guildy or someone in, uh, will call me out and <laughs> I didn't pay attention to it and I didn't know maybe I was doing something farming, PvP or uh, uh, probably raiding or whatever. And sometimes you just don't notice it. So the whisper alert option in ELV UI allows to well, the add-on makes a sound if uh, your name is mentioned or you can add new words here if um, certain things are mentioned in chat. So basically, it's useful in case you get too preoccupied with stuff. Now, let's move on to the panel section. So the lock option is very useful for me mainly because, um, yeah, sometimes I get too excited and accidentally move stuff around. So yeah, that's one thing that's really useful to lock down the chat panel. And the next thing is uh, separating uh, panel sizes. So sometimes I want to resize uh, uh, one part, uh, one panel, the left panel instead of the right panel part. And um, you know, I, w I want things to be um, how do I describe it? In, in you know, sort of uh, in sync. So make sure that you don't tick this box if you want things to be the same. If you're moving the left panel and you want the right panel to basically adjust the same. Uh, of course, you have your panel height and panel width. And um, 
Next up is uh, what else am I missing here? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, it's pretty easy. Now we get into the part where you can see that graphic uh, right there, and that will really involve another add-on, which is called chat textures. I will um, add that in your screen as a as, as a big text for you to read. Uh, you can also it's also it's basically just an add-on for the ELV UI unit frames, which is what we're discussing right now. So what happens there is that. Um, this is where you input the uh, path where you intend to put it. So in this case, I just um, input uh, the path of the texture I want to use. So in this case, let's say, let's use uh, Paladin since this is a Pally. I hope it works. There you go. So basically, it now adds a graphic, a graphic to your um, chat window. It's really up to you. There's a whole lot of options that the author made or the author made for this um, mini add-on to your add-on, uh, uh, which is ELUI. So there's a whole bunch that he added there for different classes and some non-class specific um, add-ons, even some faction specific um, graphics. So I encourage you to check out Chat Textures, uh, the add-on, which is an add-on to ELUI. Um, yeah, just do a search on the web and you can find that. Now, one more thing about uh, the, the chat uh, window is that you notice there are some b a bunch of data texts over here. And you can also see that in the mini screenshot I added. Uh, that's not changed via the chat win the chat option in ELV UI. That is changed through the data text option. So in, in this case, uh, I've just selected it. And um, let's just go ahead and discuss the right chat and the left chat so basically what you can see right here is you can specify what you want to show up so in this case um, we can change it to armor let me see where am I oh okay so I made adjustments to the left chat pane that is strange I am looking oh I'm in the right chat pane so let's <laughs> let's go ahead and change that up to or whatever attack power so let's say we want to change this one the spec and loot so that's on your left chat pane. Let's uh, change it to bags. There you go. Let's change it to mana regen. Okay, there you go. And um, I don't know, let's change it to something else. System. There you go. So basically, uh, yeah, if you do want to customize the data text that's below the chat window, uh, left or right, it also affects the the, uh, the panel you're seeing here under your minimap. Uh, yeah, you can do that through the data texts option in ELV UI. Okay, so for the last part of the tweaking your UI part one section of this guide, we are going to be talking about your minimap. And actually, I touched upon it a bit uh, in the data text section earlier. Uh, when I mentioned that you could just m make some changes to the panel right here. Uh, let me show you the second thing you can do to modify your minimap, which is by going through to general and uh, selecting on the drop down minimap. Now you can just basically choose to enable or disable it, and I'm guessing most people will have it on, uh, especially if you're, you know, it, it has many uses, like you want to farm nodes and stuff like that. Uh, you can also change the scale or the size of the map. So yeah, there's a lot of gray area seen here, but uh, when you reload your UI, it's going to fix that. It's sort of going to fill up the whole screen. And of course, the location text, it's up to you if you want a cle cleaner look to your mini map. So I simply have mine set to minimap mouse over so it's always hidden unless I move my mouse in that region of the screen some people might have it uh, choose to have it uh, hidden all the time and maybe a few will probably have you know choose to have it shown all the time via always display now the third thing you can do or a third option you have to modify the mini map is via the buffs and debuffs uh, option here so just make sure to select um, one thing is consolidated buffs, so it's what you're seeing here on the right side. Um, if you disable that or remove this check check mark, it basically uh, lists your buffs uh, as you would see it in the normal Blizzard layout, so which is pretty much in this row. So um, yeah, I don't like that mainly because um, if I can sort of just consolidate things, I would. So I leave that on, so it's just always here. And uh, the other option that's useful is uh, remaining time. So you can see that it's pretty small, but it says 59M, which minutes, which is in minutes. And um, yeah, you can also change the font style, the font size, and you know, remove or have the outline. It's really up to you. But yeah, so basically those are the three things you can do to make changes to your minimap.
Okay, so this is basically still continuing the tweaking of your UI, uh, but I uh, just sort of separated it in the uh, menu section you had earlier uh, to make it uh, easier for people to d basically digest. So part two is going to be about uh, the action bars and your key binds. So basically, um, to modify your action bars, you simply go to your action bar section. Um, since it's this is sort of the default layout, let's just uh, make sure that other um, action bars are showing. Let me just see which one's easier to access. So you got bar four, bar six. Okay, let's just make changes to bar six and have it shown up. Uh, okay, so let's enable that. Okay, so you can see it right here. Now, as I mentioned, yeah, you just simply have to go here and you can choose whether to have individual bars uh, show up or hidden. Uh, again, if you're have, having trouble locating them, just use the grid feature in ELV UI. Okay. Now, um, there's not really a whole lot. Uh, it's pretty and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but let me just show you some things that might sort of affect how uh, it looks on your screen. So if you see here, I enabled bar six. So it's it's clean looking but you know some people might want to have more backdrop to it and not have spacing in between them so it's this option so I, I should be in bar six and this one okay as you can see here right now uh, it's pretty solid looking there is some spacing in between but that's mainly uh, some a, a lighter shade just to show that they're basically different buttons but there's no sort of see-through aspect to them anymore so that's using the backdrop option um what else uh there's also the mouse over option in case you want a, a, a normally a clean looking interface especially if you're just out questing um or you're not very uh well i could see it in questing as you know it being useful as being always hidden but i'm guessing let's say in in certain areas where you're raiding or probably in arena and when you want to see whether some skills are off your cooldown, especially for those skills that maybe have a CD of only 30 seconds. So I can't see how this will be useful. Some people, you know, as you know, I've seen some setups where people will place their most important CDs at the top where it's closer to the player frame and the uh, target of target frame. So basically they want to see which ones are coming off cooldown pretty quickly. Uh, so that's entirely up to you. Uh, next, you can adjust the number of buttons. Okay. And there you go. Uh, you can adjust the number of buttons per row which will sort of automatically adjust uh, as you can see here let me just move it around bar six let's move it around here okay uh, as you can see we can make changes to the number of buttons per row which automatically adjusts based on the number of buttons you wanted to show uh, size can also be adjusted. Again, this might be useful if you are in arena or PV and battlegrounds or maybe raiding so you can see your cooldowns clearly. It's ent entirely up to you where you even want to place certain action bars so you can see it. Uh, it, it, it so it's very obvious to see. Uh, you can also adjust button spacing if you want it bigger. That'll become more obvious if you remove the backdrop. Okay, so that's entirely up to you. And uh, you can also make adjustments to the height multiplier, width multiplier, etc. Um, alpha. Whether you want it sort of transparent or not, that again, again, is up to you. Now let's do your key binds. So to be able to uh, place in your key binds, you the first thing you can do is basically just type slash KB in your chat window, and that basically starts it off. Now. Um, I just want to mention here there's a uh, tick box here where it says a uh, character specific key binding so uh, unless you're very specific and you want specific binds to work a particular way or you want specific keys only for certain spells on this class and a different set of keys for that class um, I suggest you just select this option so that it's consistent across your characters um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to leave that at that. Uh, I might make changes uh, to my other characters, and I don't want that mainly because I want it consistent across my characters. So let's hit this card. Now, the second way to access your key binds or the key bind option is to basically go into the main options in the add on, go to action bars, and hit key bind mode. And it's basically just like typing in slash KB on your chat window. And um, let me just discard that. Okay, let me pull up the uh, that window again. Okay, action bars. So uh, some important things here. Um, 
sometimes you may make some macros and that's not going to be part of this video but uh, if you do make some macros uh, sometimes it's a pretty lengthy word that you sometimes assign for your macro uh, this uh, checkbox just merely indicates whether you want part of the word showing up in your um, uh, in your action bar or in your spell book uh, I, I don't like that so I leave that off and um, keybind text of course I leave that on as you can see here uh, just observe here if I check it back I put a check mark on it again it shows Q E V B stuff like that so I always like that very visible sometimes uh, I don't know sometimes I, I forget that's strange but I do um, now the key down option, let me read it. Action button keybinds will respond on key down rather than on key up. Now I've always preferred key down the key down option mainly because it is faster, um, especially when you are uh, in an environment where everything has where your reaction has to be very fast and precise and not just you're not second guessing stuff. Um, especially I can see this very useful in arena or in BGs where you want to execute your sk your skill quickly. So it's better to have the key down option uh, checked simply. And um, okay, always show action bars. Uh, let's say you had some blank uh, spaces here, like here in the bottom. If you remove that check mark, it's going to remove that. Now, uh, it's really up to you. Sometimes you might have some spacing in between here in your main bar, and um, it's, it's going to look strange if you, you do that. So, my normal option, as you've seen in my other videos, I do have some spacing in my bars, but I just leave it uh, with a check mark. And uh, to basically make sure you don't, you're not moving your skills around accidentally, although I don't know how that's going to be since we are not uh, ideally supposed to be clicking on mouse, uh, mousing, mousing over and clicking on buttons. Uh, in case uh, you just want to be safe, just make sure to enable the shift key if you want to move some of your skills around in your action bar. And uh, to change the font, the size, and the outline. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so one thing I often get asked about is uh, which font I'm using for my combat text. Now, there's actually basically um, two things about that. There's one of the things there is the floating combat text you can see right here. Uh, let me just do a damaging spell. Okay, so the numbers you're seeing up there. And also, the informative uh, combat text you're seeing below here. So let's get to that. Okay, so once you've completely exited the client, uh, make sure to visit a web page where it offers some of the true type fonts. And uh, here's one example, which is the font.com. And um, basically, you just have to go through the list of fonts that are available and pick one that you like. Now, uh, even if you pick one here, let's say you like uh, whatever this is, uh, Geometos or Geometos or whatever, um, sometimes it won't come out correctly in game. Sometimes it's going to be too small, too big, or appear pixelated. Uh, again, it will involve some trial and error uh, on which one you like. But again, it's important first that you have to have the fonts that you want. So this is just this is just basically one example of a site where you can grab it from. Now, remember, if you do grab a couple of fonts, just remember where you save them because you do have to paste them in the fonts folder in ELVUI. So this bottom window is basically the installation of ELVUI and the top window is basically just, let's say you downloaded an update to ELVUI. So that's one, but let's leave that later. So what you want to do again is save the fonts in media and fonts. So here, you will have a list of the fonts, uh, well, some of the default fonts that come with ELVUI, and uh, it will also basically include, or this is where you should save any other fonts that you like. Now, that's not that. Uh, you still have to register the font in ELVUI, so what you have to do is go back up to the media folder and open up the shared media text file. Now, what you want to do, again, as I mentioned, is register the font. So basically, you have to insert this line, something like, uh, well, not something like, but uh, LSM register. So basically, the only thing that you really need to change here are two things. So what is, what do you want the name of the font to be in game, which is this one, the one in quotation. And of course, you need to point the media file to the exact location, okay, and the exact name of the font file. Okay, I'll make sure to add some text uh, on screen so you can see that clearly. So again, uh, this one in quotation is what do you want it to look like or what do you want its name to be inside ELVUI once you're in game. And the path here just simply means that you have to point it towards the exact name and the exact location of the font that you downloaded. So once you're done with that, don't forget to save. So just like that. It doesn't matter if there's spacing, it's going to be fine. And um, yeah. 
So that's what you do when you have an existing installation of uh, ELV UI. Now the thing here is that uh, since we're not doing an automatic process, and again, as I mentioned earlier in the first part of this video, I'm not sure how the automatic process goes. Um, you have to make sure that um, if you're updating your copy of ELV UI, you have to make sure that you grab the fonts that you sort of personally uh, saved here, and remember to re-register the font in the new share media file that you will grab from the from this window over here which is just an example of when you grab a new installation of ELV UI so don't forget to do that every time and uh, once you do that uh, all the font options you see in game uh, let's say for combat text which is what you were trying to focus on uh, the font that you selected given the name that you specified in the share media file which is this one or whatever it is it will show up in the drop down menu and the last thing I wanted to go through with you guys is basically just the profile feature in uh, ELV UI. Now, it basically works like any other uh, profile feature for any other add-on that supports that. So, uh, yeah, I suggest making use full use of this one, especially if you have a bunch of alts. Now, if you're just basically uh, the, the kind of person who just want to run with one main and no other alts, and that's fine for you, that you don't have to worry about this feature. But, um, yeah, if you do have a bunch of alts and... Um, yeah, so basically if you want to maintain one look for uh, one UI look for all your uh, characters So basically just make sure that for example if you had character one and uh, this what you're seeing right now is an alt You basically just choose the profile for your um, For your alt and that basically sets up your ELV UI to you know to to the way it looks now remember earlier I also I also showed you how to key bind in ELV UI and um, it's also the same if you made your key binds character specific then of course you'll have to reset things uh, I mean basically set things up again but um, if you did not select the character specific option for key binding then yeah you basically will have the same uh, key binds for all your characters and um, now sometimes with me I like to experiment a lot with my UI and I make mistakes along the way so what I suggest you do is don't maintain one single profile for all your characters. So in this case, um, if you do have different alts, let them have their own profiles. And if you want to copy one existing UI look from another character, just make sure to use the copy from feature, which is this one. And um, just basically select the character and realm that you sort of want to copy from. And it will basically just copy whatever settings there as, you know, as with selecting a profile as... Uh, it will basically just copy the settings from that um, character in that realm onto whatever's loaded at the moment. Now, one tip I can make is if you often find yourself making mistakes with the look of your UI and you sort of lose your preferred UI settings and look and everything, I can suggest creating a dummy account in another realm or basically the same realm and um, having its own profile and store whatever settings you have there. So basically, let's say, um, this account is some level 8, level 1 character. So what you do is basically um, make sure it has its own profile and copy the ideal profile from one of your alts, which is most likely your main or some other character you use very often, and save it in that low level character. Now never touch that character again and just uh, basically just make sure it just stays there um, uh, for you to be able to load up in case you do mess up your UI look. Oof. And that's pretty much it how I set up my UI interface with the ELV UI add-on. As I mentioned earlier, if you like this add-on, uh, just make sure to keep tweaking it to your needs so you get a more personal experience. And um, well, I really hope that you found this useful. If you did, uh, leave a thumbs up, share, and subscribe if you haven't. Talk to you soon.